Welcome back to the Goofy Rebuilds, where today we are going to be doing a fantasy draft where we can only pick offense. Now, for the rest of this rebuild, after we get this starting team, we can do pretty much whatever, but this starting team is going to be insane, and probably by the end of this, it's going to look crazy too. And I'm excited to get into this. I think this is going to make a surprisingly crazy good team. So get a drink, get a snack, get whatever. And for this goofy special fantasy draft video. Let's see if we can get to 3,000 likes, and if we can, I will do another one of these. I could do really whatever kind of theme. I could do a defensive fantasy draft only, which maybe would be harder. Whatever y'all would want to see. So let me know down in the comments what type of goofy fantasy draft ideas y'all have. I'll give you a shout out if I use your suggestion, if you care about that, but just let me know what you want to see. So yeah, 3,000 likes, and I'll do another one of these. And last thing, just be sure to subscribe if you haven't already all i do are sometimes realistic but mostly goofy rebuilds and fantasy draft rebuilds so if you like that type of thing be sure to subscribe and thank you for 43k we're getting super close to 50k which i'm trying to hit by the end of the month we've been growing insanely quickly lately so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already it'll make you an og of the channel for when we inevitably hit 10 million subscribers definitely but without further ado let's get into this fantasy draft and we will see what pick we start with and i remembered to pick snake draft so I don't have to go back and recreate this whole franchise. Be proud of me. Ooh, okay. <laughs> we start with pick 29, which could be better. We also don't have a background. Hold on. Oh, I mean, are we going to get a better pick now? Me closing it just reset the fantasy draft. We get pick 23. I don't know if that's better or worse, but now we have a background. And I was thinking QB with this pick. We could go Jordan Love. Ooh. I very, very rarely take QB with the first pick in fantasy drafts. I just don't think it's worth it because you don't necessarily have to have a high overall QB for them to do well, but we might do that here. Most offensive players are still available though. I mean, most of the top receivers are gone, but we could still get Amon Ross St. Brown. We could get a tight end. We could get Christian McCaffrey, Nick Chubb, Derrick Henry, some good running back. I think we're going to build this around maybe a rookie QB. And I don't mean a real life rookie. I mean a Madden generated rookie. I think that would be kind of fun. We'll see though. But for this first pick, I'm between Amon Ross St. Brown and Christian McCaffrey. I don't know how much the Bengals playbook in Madden uses receiving running backs, so that's why I'm a little not leaning towards McCaffrey. Let's go with Amon Ross St. Brown. Let's get a really good number one receiver. Superstar Dev, only 23, year old, 23 years old. Sounds good. And I'm not going to show every pick here, but I'll show the first few. And Christian McCaffrey is still available. I forgot running backs go pretty far down the board in fantasy drafts, but if there was a fantasy draft for some reason in real life, I don't think Christian McCaffrey would last very long pause just because of his receiving ability so let's take him here ranked 14 in the class I'm surprised he was still available we'll take him we have Justin Fields still available he's kind of cheeks in this game I'm he's kind of bad Bryce Young Kenny Pickett not the best options left and here we might go with like one of the best linemen in this game in Chris Lindstrom he performs so well I mean normally I wouldn't take right guard this early but we could even move him to left let's take him there goes Justin Fields I have another plan for QB in this draft though. We're obviously gonna have to take one eventually, but I do have a plan. But here, let's go with Drake London. We're not gonna have the, the fastest receiving core necessarily, but a good one. Still only 22 here, so he has a ton of room to grow. Oh, okay, Travis Kelsey got taken. I wasn't gonna take him because he is very old, but if he was still available here, I would have. I've been thinking about it for the last few rounds, but I didn't. But hey, we'll just take the top tight end on the board, TJ Hawkinson. Sounds good. The pick after the Vikings took Kyle Hamilton. Joel Betonio, I feel like I get him in every rebuild I've ever done, but he's good and he always hits free agency, but we'll still take him here. And now, do I finally want to take our QB of the future? The question is, which one do I go with? I'm between two. Oh, Stetson Bennett's here. I don't know what video it was, but I turned him into a beast once. Oh, I thought I accidentally picked him. I pressed B. Okay. <laughs> Let's go with maybe one more receiver and then we will take our QB. How about Josh Downs? Only 22 years old, not a scheme fit, but we'll probably change our scheme. Let's take him. And now let's take our QB. I think we are gonna go with Anthony Richardson. We could maybe wait. He He's probably gonna still be available for another, you know, few rounds, but I don't want to risk him going. He sometimes becomes very, very, very good in this game. Is maybe the most, most athletically gifted quarterback ever with arm talent, speed, strength, all that. And he'll definitely be in a position to succeed with an insane offense around him. So let's take him. Yeah, I probably could have waited to take 
second, but oh well. Oh yeah, and how I'm gonna do the rest of this draft, I'm not gonna show the rest of it because I don't wanna be here for 22 years. I'm gonna fill this offense out until all the depth is like completely full, like two QBs, three running backs, six receivers, three tight ends, all that. And then I'll pick defense just so I don't have to sign free agents <laughs> and cut like a million offensive players. It's not like I'll be drafting good defensive players. It'll be pretty much the same ones I would sign out of free agency. Just less work because I'm lazy. But let's get to the end of the draft and we will see how the team looks. It's going to be a little bit of a difference in overall from the offense to the defense. Just a little bit. All right. Well, after the draft, we are an 80 overall, which isn't amazing, but it isn't even that bad. I will reference this until the end of time. The CPU drafted a 79 overall team for me once and I wanted to die, but I see a little bit of a difference in uh, offensive and defensive overall. Wonder why that could be. We have a 91 overall offense and a 68 overall defense. <laughs> Let's get a look at the team. So obviously our offense is looking very good. Even our depth is like borderline starting caliber. I mean, not quite, but it's it's close. I mean, this O-line is ridiculous. Just this whole offense obviously is insane, but the defense, I can't really say the same. I didn't make every pick of the rest of the draft, but I, I took a few players, just some of the younger ones. I actually did take most of these players. What did the CPU do? I guess it picked guys like Artie Burns and Tack McKinley and LJ Collier. Oh, we have the Sewell brothers at linebacker. I drafted Noah Sewell. The CPU drafted Nephi Sewell. That's kind of fun, actually. But clearly a little bit of a difference in offense and defense. So our offense is pretty much set. We're just going to have to develop it. I doubt we're going to have to do much to it throughout the rebuild. This is going to be out about, you know, fixing this defense because it needs it, clearly. But for this first season, we're just going to see how this team does. Let's get to the midseason point and we will see what happens with this very, very lopsided team. Okay, well, at the midseason point, we are probably exactly where we should be at three and three. I mean, realistically, we, we probably should be really good, even though our defense sucks. I don't know. I guess not. But how much do we want to bet that we have a bad offense in a pretty good defense? I don't know. The offense is so good and the defense is so bad that it might overcome terrible Madden simulation. But let's see. Okay, well, our defense is terrible, but our offense isn't very good either. <laughs> so, oh yeah, we have the third. Okay, our, our defense yards wise is performing better than our offense. Thanks, EA. Multi-billion dollar company, by the way. And we already have a decent amount of re-signings to worry about. Chris Lindstrom, Joel Batonio. I guess those are the only starters. Well, I guess Yazir Abdullah is too, but these are the two really only important ones. Chris Lind Lindstrom, we will bring back three years, 54 mil, and he re-signs. That's pretty cheap. And then Joel Batonio, four years, 120 mil, and he doesn't take it. I don't know if I can blame him with this underperforming ass offense. It's not a surprise, but it's still stupid. But let's get to the end of this season and we will see how we finish. Hopefully our offense can start doing better. Okay, well, we finished seven and 10, which is tough, but again, weird team. I can't really complain with underperformance, I guess. These stats are gonna be really, really interesting though. I, I'm gonna assume we had like four sacks all season and it looks like we did have a good amount of passing yards, less than I would have expected, but Anthony Richardson at 3,600 yards, 33 touchdowns. The picks were a little high, but he was a rookie. Nice completion percentage. Christian McCaffrey, almost 1,300 yards, 5.4 per carry, seven touchdowns. I thought the Bengals playbook was a little more spread out with targets. Well, th almost 1,300 yards for Amon Ross St. Brown, 12 touchdowns, less than 900 yards for Josh Downs, five touchdowns. I thought we would have like three 1,000 yard receivers. Which playbook is like that? I think the Cowboys, no? Why does every offense look the exact same? Well, not that one. Is it the Raiders? Ooh. Was any offense good in the NFL? Jaden Reed had the second most receiving yards in the league, and number one was Chris Godwin. Adam Thielen was like almost top five. Back on the Vikings, this is, this is a certified EA classic if I've ever seen one. The blocking was good. Connor Williams was pretty bad, but Chris Lindstrom joins the all-castration team once again. He's on that list like 40 times over probably. Like I said, he's one of the best linemen in this game. He allowed zero sacks. Noah Sewell led the team with 131 tackles. Maybe he'll get a dev trait. We'll see. 15 TFLs for Yazir Abdullah led the team. 13 for Diabate or however you say his last name. And Tack McKinley led the team with four and a half sacks. He didn't even start. Well, he did get almost 500 snaps. That wasn't really intentional. Abdullah with three. Interesting. More sacks than I expect. A whole 12. I had a group with T. 
TJ Watt do worse? So, or well, I think just as bad. I think it was 12 sacks. So that could have been worse. And then Jalen Jones led the team with three picks, two for Sewell and Williams, and then one for Dorian Williams and Artie Burns. MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes on the Jets. That's something. Offensive player of the year goes to Chris Godwin. That's not really a shocker after what we saw. St. Brown at number seven, McCaffrey at number 10. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald on the Colts. That's maybe the weirdest team he could go to. I don't know why that's just really weird. No Bengals, big shocker there. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Jackson Smith and Jigba. Anthony Richardson all the way down at five? What? <laughs> okay, Josh Downs at number six. Was it the interceptions? Because I mean, 16 is a lot, but I feel like the other stuff he did outweighed that. And whoa, we have a lot of players. Okay, we of course get cucked. We get number two for defensive rookie of the year. Will Anderson wins it for the Jets. The Jets went kind of crazy. They cooked in the draft. Noah Sewell at number two. Jalen Jones. I'm not going to list off all these players, but you see them. We had a lot of rookies, but really this isn't a rookie of the year season. Again, I know a lot of picks, but uh, maybe this isn't a good offense. We don't, <laughs> we don't have many QB rushes. All right. What's a, what's a pass heavy, but also quarterback run heavy offense in this game. Is it the Jets or are they just pass heavy because they have Patrick Mahomes? You know what? It might be the Colts, which makes sense. It's kind of just the Eagles playbook pretty much, or the, the former Eagles playbook because they have Shane Steichen. We'll try that. We'll see how it goes, but let's get into the off season. We still have an important player to re-sign in Joel Batonio. Hopefully we can get him back, but let's really start to work on this defense too. And let's see if we can get any dev trades. I hope so, because we kind of need them. What a Super Bowl. The, <laughs> the Chargers destroy the Eagles with a weird score. Do we have Super Bowl Scorigami here? Question mark? I mean, the, I don't know if 44 to 22 or 46 to 22 has ever happened, but the Chargers absolutely destroy the Eagles in the Super Bowl here. Who are the quarterbacks of those two teams? I know the Eagles have Josh Allen, which is something. They also have Jonathan Allen. That's confusing. This team doesn't look that good. I mean, it's good, but <laughs> that's interesting. I know the Chargers have Alvin Kamara, but they have Jalen Hurts, so they steal the Eagles' old quarterback. This team is old. <laughs> what the hell? I can't for sure say these were the two best rosters in the league necessarily, but that was the Super Bowl. And let's see, did we hit any dev ups? Amon Ross St. Brown went to X Factor, so that's pretty cool. I wasn't really looking for any on offense offense, but we'll definitely take that. And on defense, oh, we got way more than I would have expected. Okay, Abdullah went up to star. Same with Jalen Jones and Noah Sewell, Dorian Williams, and Brandon Joseph. What did Brandon Joseph do? Oh, he had a hundred tackles. Is that why he got it? I mean, it won't tell me why he got it, but I mean, I guess we'll still take it. <laughs> we still value in tackles as a raw stat in 2023 or 2024 now. I guess this would be the 2023 season though. That's something. If that's what he even got it for, I don't know. But let's see if we can get Joel Batonio back. I don't even remember. I I went, I miss when it would tell you what the player wants instead of just, uh, well, I don't like it. Like, okay, well, let me know what you want improved about it. <laughs> this is kind of expensive. Three years, 107 mil. That's very expensive. <sighs> we'll see if he takes it and he does. Okay, well, we don't really have to worry about money yet, but when we do, it might get ugly. Yazir Abdullah will go very player friendly. He already rejected one contract, but he got star dev. He does take it. Okay, cool. Did anyone else here get star dev? No. And I don't want to pay backups like Dontavian Wicks is good. Dewan Jones is pretty good, but like we, this offense is going to get expensive. So I'm going to save our money. Okay. He rejects us, but let's get into free agency. It's not going to be very strong. The first year in these fantasy drafts never is, but hopefully there are at least some upgrades. Demarcus Lawrence is here, which I would normally be happy about because he's way too good in this game. Oh yeah. 19 and a half sacks. That's, that's realistic for his career. Well, he did have 14 one year, but that was six years ago, and that wasn't 19 and a half. Love this game. I would go for him, but he's not interested, and he has 30 other offers. I mean, maybe they're all low ball offers. Sometimes that happens. No, <laughs> no. Okay. Wow, literally nobody's interested. Really? I mean, we, we weren't the worst team ever. Again, we underperformed massively, but there is literally, like, nobody interested. I mean, there are some, like, depth players, I guess. I mean, some a little better than depth, but... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's just tough. Antonio Johnson, he's only 22. We do get a lead for him. I mean, we'll just take what we can get. That's all I can really do. God, this safety free agent class is terrible. I mean, the free safeties are better, but they're all ancient. Okay, <laughs> well, I guess I'll get a kicker and punter just so I can do something. Uh, they'll probably reject us. I mean, I hope not, but probably. All right, absolutely massive free agent class here. We're going for Antonio Johnson, who is actually pretty 
good for the Jags this year? Not exactly a big name, though. Or is he the one for the Jag? Yeah. Yeah, the one from Texas A&M, right? Yeah. There were two Antonio Johnsons in the draft, and <laughs> they originally named the wrong one to the Packers? Or, I don't know, they named the wrong one in the draft when one of them got taken, and they had to change it. So that was fun. But yeah, this is the one from the Jags. So yeah, huge free agent class. Let's see if we can get these three players. We get Antonio Johnson. <sighs> All right, uh, Jake Camarda. Nope. <laughs> Tommy Townsend, maybe? Can we get these two? We do, okay. Let's get to the draft. But in the draft, we pick at number nine. The draft the draft background is broken again. I, I don't care. It'll just be a mystery who the other teams pick, but we pick at number nine. And unfortunately for us, I mean, it's not like this is a, a different thing or anything, but it is mostly offensive players at the top of the board, or at least it was. I guess now there are a, a few defensive guys now that some of the other offensive players got taken, but the the defensive players that are here don't look particularly great. Patrick Forbes is a first to second round talent. I don't want to pick that at number nine. Carl Fields actually looks pretty good. He only has decent acceleration though. Solid strength. <laughs> Not worth a top 10 pick. Maybe like early second. I thought I focus scouted this corner. No, I focus scouted this corner. I thought I focus scouted both. Bruh. He's great speed, only solid acceleration, elite change of direction though. He looks good. Good. Maybe like a 77. <laughs> Franklin Woodley, what's your speed? Oh, okay. We'll hold out for this guy right here. Trade back? Question mark? I've said question mark twice in this video. I don't normally say that. Kind of cringe. James Black, why am I looking at receivers? <laughs> he does have elite speed, change of direction, and uh, acceleration though. I feel dumb as hell today. I'm, I feel like I'm saying the wrong stuff. Like I'm meaning to say one thing and I'm just messing up what I'm trying to say. I'm washed, unfortunately. You hate to see it. This defensive draft class looks like shit. <laughs> I found like two good defensive players. Okay, I think we will trade back a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean quite a bit. Maybe to like 20? Because even if corners do go, Franklin Woodley is like the last first to second round talent guy. We could even trade back farther, but we'll just trade back to 20. Unless 20 is like a division rival or something. Let's see what we can do. Wow, the first team I randomly went to is pick 20. That was lucky. All right, I don't know if this is fair. I don't know if I, don't know if I really care. I don't think that is very good for... Well... I maybe could have gotten more. I'm bad with trade value. I mean, it looks like a lot from the Bengals, but that's trading up from 20 into the top 10, so I don't know. Or from the Titans. We are the Bengals. I'm stupid. But at pick 20, I thought he got taken. No, let's go with Franklin Woodley. He's gonna have normal dev, which is fine, but great speed, elite agility, and acceleration. Hopefully A awareness, but at least A press, B zone. I'm guessing B man. You know, the more I look at him, the less good he looks, but I think he's the best player available. Is the free safety still here? No, he's gone. I don't know if he was great though, but we'll go with Franklin Woodley out of Buffalo. Interesting school. And yeah, he does have normal dev, but that's fine. Great speed, great acceleration. He's an upgrade and that's really what we need right now. <laughs> now let's see. I want a defensive end. None of them really look great. Donald Miner looks pretty good. Obviously as a defensive tackle, he's 6'4", 301 and we run a 4'3", so yeah. Ooh, Dante Palmer. Okay, he looks good. I don't normally like taking defensive tackles though. I mean, 42 bench rep and running a 486 is insane, but I don't think he's as good as he looks. He could be, but I I don't I don't believe it. I have trust issues with Madden. <laughs> I really do. Dexter Parker, the play rec isn't great. He does look pretty good though. Oh, this linebacker is good. I mean, not a pass rusher, but first to second round talent. Okay, here we will go with Donald Miner. We'll move him to defensive tackle. Him and Dream would get along. That's a relevant reference, definitely. Let's take him. He does have hidden dev. That's surprising. <laughs> I don't even know the last time I've taken a hidden dev run stopper first to second round talent defensive end. I didn't know they existed. I thought they were just hard coded to have normal. He's probably not a great overall, but we'll take the dev trait. We need to go with some kind of pass rusher of some kind. Oh, not him. It's gonna be a reach. It's gonna look terrible on paper, but we need to do it. I think the best looking one is Notori Thornton. <laughs> he kind of looks terrible, but so does everyone else. So I don't know. How about this dude, Jason Cavanaugh? He actually looks pretty good too. We might be able to get both later, but here we're not going to do that yet. Let's go with a linebacker. Do we want to play it safe and go with the guy that's a for sure first to second round talent, or do we want to take a chance on someone else? I think he is the best looking one though. Yeah, we'll go with Chris Bost. That's kind of an annoying name to say. It's kind of hard to say, but he looks good. Not, not very fast. 
fast, he's pretty damn slow. It says great speed. In what world? I mean, if he was a pass rusher, that would be good speed, but he's not. We'll take him. Normal dev, whatever. <laughs> Fine. But I'll make a few more picks and we will see how we did. I think, I'm going to be honest, I think I forgot to set the draft classes to strong, so I don't think the overalls here are going to be the best, <laughs> but I did set them now, so next year's will be a strong one. Okay, well, yeah, this was definitely a draft, <laughs> but Franklin Woodley is a 77. I think that's about what I guess. Something like that. I, who cares? Not the best zone, but pretty good man, pretty good press, just really good speed. That's why we drafted him. He'll be our number one corner, which is a little sad, but he's good, so I don't know. <laughs> Donald Miner is a 75 at defensive tackle. I want to see what the other guy's overalls are. Our other options at defensive end slash tackle. Of course, t Dante Palmer was a 76, whatever. What, does he have a dev trait? He does. Wh whatever. That's fine. I feel like I've like taken players like Dante Palmer that are a, a 12 overall on a good day. Like, whenever I take a player that looks like that, they suck. Whenever I don't take them, they're great. I What am I missing there? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> was the corner we got the best player in the class? No, there was a an 82 overall guard to the Jags, but yeah, I mean, Franklin Woodley was tied for the second best player in the class with a few others. We'll take that. I mean, that's a great value pick, even though he didn't have a dev trait, but Carl or Chris Boss was a 74. I just cannot get words out today for some reason. Thorin was only a 68. Kavanaugh was a little better at a 70. I can't remember if any of these guys had a dev trait. I don't think they did. We got kind of shafted with the dev traits. Another word I don't use much. Shafted is kind of a fun word. I should use it more. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's get into year two. But here's a look at the team heading into year two. It's still a little bit lopsided. Not quite a 20 overall difference anymore between offense and defense, but 19, right? I don't know. Math is hard. But yeah, this offense is still ridiculous. Nothing changed here other than development, but the defense is much improved. I mean, we're a 73, still not good, but the positive it is it is very young and we should develop a lot throughout the year. Hopefully Miner has a good dev trait. I guess we'll see. I still don't think our pass rush is going to be very good this year, but our corner group is really good at the very least. We'll probably need a safety that might be our focal point for this offseason. We'll see. We might do a million times worse this year. We might do a lot better. We'll see. We'll just have to see. So let's get to the midseason point and hopefully we're doing better. Okay, well, we are doing better. We're four and two. We still have a really bad offense. We're, we're 28th overall with a 93 overall offense. I love this game. Never change, Madden. Our defense is bad, but doing better than our offense. I mean, we're, we're like pretty good in some categories on offense, but really not many. We don't have many giveaways, which is shocking. I thought that would be the one thing we're struggling with, but no, we're just not really moving the ball with a 93 overall offense. The Chiefs have a 77 overall offense, and that's the best in the league. Certainly playbooks don't matter too much. No way. I mean, to be fair, I thought we were using good ones. I don't know, dude. <laughs> At least we're doing better than last year, though, but we're not doing well for the right reasons. And unfortunately, we have a ton of re-signings, and look at the interest levels. Oh, I didn't even see this. Isaiah likely at least has a tiny bit, but he is the only one. Maybe there's someone back here. No, he's the only one with any interest in re-signing. <laughs> That's great. Christian McCaffrey will go five years, 96 mil. He re-signs. Um, Tyler Smith will go four years, 89 mil. This team's getting expensive. He doesn't take it. All right, cool. That's great. Noah Sewell, four years, 14.4 mil. He takes it. Brandon Joseph, four years, 12 mil. He takes it. Trent Brown will re-sign after the year, depending on how he does. We'll wait for him to regress a little bit, and then, yeah, that's unlucky. <laughs> Hopefully our offense can get a little better, though. We'll see. But let's get to the end of the year, and we will see how we finish. We'll probably choke again, because we have a much better record than actual statistical performance, but we'll see. You never know. Yeah, that was a pretty good prediction. I should have predicted 7 and 10. <laughs> that's what that's what I was thinking we would finish, and we do finish 7 and 10. That's tough. One of the worst defenses, which makes sense, but our offense still was not good. I mean, I know it, it's hard to do all on offense with a bad defense, but I, I don't know. I mean, we should get more time on offense because our defense should be getting scored on so quick. I don't know. Anthony Richardson was good again. Still way too many picks. Did I even change the offensive playbook? This looks exactly the same. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey was good. Not as good as last year, but still 1,250 yards, 4.4 per carry, six touchdowns, 11 touchdowns for Kyron Williams. Amon Ross St. Brown had 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns. Drake London was all right, but not much receiving outside of those two. What did... Uh, was this even worth it? <laughs> yeah, Anthony Richardson got a little 
little more rushing, but didn't do well necessarily. And then on defense, 133 tackles for Dorian Williams, 126 for Chris Bost as a rookie. Tackles for loss, a lot. I'm not listing all those, but 18 for Donald Miner in sacks, four and a half from Donald Miner led the team. Okay, I, I think I found the problem on defense. In picks, we had three for Woodley, two for Boston Johnson and Williams, and then one for Jones. How did the blocking look? I accidentally skipped over it. It was really, really good. What's our problem on offense? I guess just the picks? Is Anthony Richardson the problem? Are we really about to have three different playbooks in three seasons? I love this brand of Madden. Just the game of changing playbooks until you find one that works. But Joe Burrow wins MVP for the Cardinals. That's sure something. Why did Matt Stafford on the Jags look normal to me for a second? I was like, yeah, no, that's right. That's normal. With his picture so small, he kind of looks like Blake Bortles to me a little bit. Not really, but from my perspective, a tiny bit. <laughs> Jordan Love got drafted by the Packers. That's something. But I, Devontae Adams wins Offensive Player of the Year. No Bengals. Defensive player of the year goes to Josh Allen on the Titans. No Bengals. Big shocker there. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Bobby Bush for the Ravens. Elite name. No Browns. I don't think I drafted any offensive players. No Bengals. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Browns. But defensive rookie of the year goes to Chris Bost. We'll take that. Donald Miner at number three. We'll have to see what his dev trade is. I kind of wish he won it unless he has X Factor, which I highly doubt, but I guess he could. Woodley at number four. So hey, we get defensive rookie of the year. That's huge. I think we... Yeah, I think we only had one dev trait, though, <laughs> or hidden dev, and it's just star. Well, that would have been nice to be a superstar, but at least Bost will get a dev trait. That's nice, but uh, not not an ideal start to this rebuild so far. Hopefully, things can pick up a little bit, especially on offense, but let's get into the offseason. And again, dev traits are especially huge in this rebuild, so let's see if we got any. We should at least get one, maybe a few, though. Another <laughs> interesting Super Bowl, the Giants beat the Chargers again. Well, the Chargers are in the Super Bowl again. The Giants win 35 to 28. The Chargers almost won back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Or no, they got smoked in the Super Bowl last year, right? Or did they do the smoking? No, they did the smoking. Well, let's find out. I'm pretty sure they did because I remember saying Jalen Hurts got revenge. Yeah. Almost back-to-back -back Super Bowl winners. They only lost by a touchdown to the Giants when they have zero in real life. But Chris Bost gets an upgrade. I keep wanting to say Chris Bosch. <laughs> oh, he goes up to superstar. Okay, we'll take that. I was worried he wouldn't get a dev trade at all because sometimes it just likes to do that, but he got two. And let's see, any dev ups on offense? No. Chris Lindstrom got superstar. Was that last year and I just didn't notice it? Yeah, it looks like it. And then Dorian Williams also went up to superstar. That's cool. Woodley went up to star and I think that was it. But hey, we'll still definitely take that. I mean, that's four dev traits gained on defense if you count the two for Bost. By next year, this defense could actually be pretty good. Maybe an 80-something. We'll we'll have to see. But for the rest of the re-signings we have to worry about, Tyler Smith I want back. It's just he doesn't want to be back. We'll offer him four years, 100 mil, which isn't super cheap at this point. That's probably not too bad, though. And he does take it. Okay. That's kind of surprising. Trent Brown actually, wasn't he an 83 at the midseason? He developed? Maybe I need to change my, like, regression sliders, because I have them lowered quite a bit, just so players don't regress too hard because I don't like them regressing at like 26. <laughs> if they're a running back, maybe, but eh. I mean, I only have 30 plus year olds at like 90 from 100. It's hardly lowered. That's interesting, but we will bring him back four years, 95 mil. That's expensive. He takes it though. We're handing out some contracts. <laughs> maybe it's not a good idea because it's not like our offense has been good, but hopefully there are some better players in free agency this year. Oh, I know why I'm getting mixed up with the Browns. The last rebuild I did, if you haven't seen it already, be sure to watch it after this. I went back and rebuilt the 0-16 era Browns. We made the playoffs like three out of four seasons. We kind of revived Johnny Manziel's career. It was a fun one. I don't know why I just spoiled it, but <laughs> go watch it after this. It was fun. Okay, well, I was gonna say it's a stronger free agent class. <laughs> no. I mean, Creed Humphreys here, which would be cool, but we're not gonna get him. We can't, and we wouldn't, because we don't really need a center. And other than him, there it's running backs and kickers. That's tough. Oh my god, I'm waiting for a train to go by. It sounds like it's going a mile an hour. It's been the same volume for like three minutes. My favorite comments I get are the ones that say the trains aren't even real and they're just, I'm, I'm schizophrenic. I don't know if you can hear that, but I hope you can. There it is. Oh god, I watched it back and you, it doesn't show up as loud as it really is. I might be insane, but I'm not at that level yet.
Yippee, nobody's interested again. Great. Well, there are a few players, but nobody I want. Marty Mapu, that would be kind of fun. I mean, we definitely don't need a linebacker. We could maybe put him at safety, though. Ooh, he was pretty good. I might get him as a safety. How's Arden Key been? He could be an option. Uh, no. <laughs> no thanks. Andrew Van Ginkle's been good. I don't know about a 6'4", 242-pound player as a 3'4 defense, or a 4'3 defensive end. He's with the Ravens. That's a really good scheme fit. Well, I don't think we can get him either. <laughs> I, th I thought it would be a bunch of smaller offers because he's 30, but that's tough. So yeah, again, we can't really do a whole lot. We're going to at least get safeties, though. We're going to get Jair Brown. Who was he with? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I guess I had to to check his stats, though. He's been with the Packers. The first year here, he was with the, the Lions. I almost said the Giants. I'm stupid. He's done okay, I guess. I just want somebody there. But let's try to sign these two players. And we at least get Mapu. Jair Brown, do you want to sign now? Okay, he does. So we get two new safeties. That's nice. I was still hoping hoping that better players would be available, but we still have the draft, so we'll see what we can do there. But in the draft, we pick at 13. Ooh, this quarterback looks good. I mean, we don't obviously need a quarterback. Eh, well. I mean, his ratings look really good, but only his good throw power, which, you know, if this guy was real, I wouldn't really care too much about that, but I don't think he's the best overall. He might still be good, but he's still available, so I don't know if he is. I wanted a pass rusher, but there just really aren't many good ones. Otis Streeter looks Okay, I still might take him. I don't think it's worth it in terms of overall, but I think he's the best pass rusher that is here. He has A finesse moves, A awareness, but that's where the A's stop. He at least has B tackle, B pursuit, B play rec, only C block shed though. He's probably like a second to third round talent player. Maybe he's first to second. What does Jeremy Coleman look like? I think, oh, mm, okay, well he's more athletic, but I don't know. I mean, really his ratings aren't that much worse than Otis Streeter's, and he's just more athletic athletic than Otis Streeter. This might be a mistake, but I kind of like him. All the outside linebackers aren't even worth looking at, really. You know what? We'll take a chance on Jeremy Coleman. I don't even have him fully scouted, but welcome to the team. Okay, he has hidden depth. I wasn't sure if he would. 85 speed, 84 strength, 91 excel. Did he have elite acceleration? I think he did. I can't remember already. I don't even know if I looked at that, but he looks pretty good, hopefully. Also, hopefully these are actually strong draft classes. I feel like every time I set him to strong, it doesn't actually actually change them for some reason. Like I changed them before the draft last year, like last year's draft, so they should have taken effect by now, but we'll see. I did focus scout this safety right here. We don't need safety anymore though. Oh, he does look kind of good though. Okay, if we can't find anyone better, we'll take him and then just figure out where to play him. It's a good strategy, strategy to just take good players and figure out what to do with them later. I mean, it's obviously better to have a plan for them, but it's better to just take good players. Again, we could also go with a corner. We really don't need corner anymore though. Hugh Phillips is good. Elite speed, only solid acceleration though. Ooh, Cole Bulware. Uh, okay, he's really strong. I thought I said B power moves, but he has B finesse moves. That's only gonna be like a 68 or something. I don't know. Dion Reynolds, this guy looks like the defensive tackle I passed on last year, but maybe better? He doesn't have good tackling though, but eh, we'll take him. Hidden Dev, 89 strength, 76 speed. Sure. We're really shoring up the D-line this year. And now, I mean, in terms of drafting, we don't really really need much more. Like we have enough younger players where it's going to be hard to upgrade over them. We just need free agents at this point. Deshaun Mallard looks good. I might take him with the next pick or maybe even later. He's not supposed to go for a while. Ooh, Sherard Goodrich. Goodrich. What a weird player. He's a power rusher, but he has poor strength and he has a power moves. Either build more muscle or I don't know, do something different. Uh, you're a weird player. I'm kind of intrigued by weird players. Normally the weird players in draft classes are the ones with really good dev traits because he's only 5'11". I might take him. Are, <laughs> oh, there is one. Okay, I was going to say, speaking of weird players, there is a six foot eight receiver this year. Okay, who's supposed to go first? He's third to fourth round talent or third to fourth, fourth round projection. Goodrich is a day three player. Okay, we'll take the receiver first. Oh, we have the 13th pick too, so we're fine to get both. BJ Fraser or Frazier? Probably Frazier. I don't know why I said Fraser. Welcome to the team. He's 6'8 and has a 41 inch vertical jump. That would be terrible terrifying. That would be so scary. But yeah, he has, he has hidden dev. That's not really a big surprise. It's like flashing orange. It genuinely hurts my eyes. I've never seen it do that before. But now let's go with Sherard Goodrich. The short king with poor strength, but A power moves. Sounds good. Another hidden dev, 80 speed, 73 strength. What a weird player. It's also weird he's not listed as a as like a 3-4 outside linebacker with only 73 strength, because that's what he would probably have to be transitioned to. Although 
Although he, he only has 66 change of direction. What a weird player. <laughs> oh my god, dude, it keeps, it's probably not in the video because it's not at points where I'm talking, but I'm genuinely like closing my eyes and I'm seeing orange. That hurts. I don't, I've never seen it do that before. It makes the whole screen orange. Okay, anyways, <laughs> I'll make a couple more picks and we will see how we did in this year's draft. Ooh, speaking of interesting players, 99 speed, let's go. Sounds good. Okay, well, Jeremy Coleman is better than I expected. I kind of thought he would only be like a 72 or 3 or something. He's a 76. 85 speed, 84 strength, 91 excel. Bad block shedding and power moves, which is fine. Well, I wish I, I wish he had better block shedding, but I mean, he looks good. We'll take it. Dion Reynolds isn't as good as I expected, though. I thought he would be a 76 like the last or the guy in last year's class that I passed on, but he's a 74. He's pretty good. That's still probably good value for the mid-ish second. And here's the thing about BJ Frazier. He's only a 72. However, if we move him to tight end, he goes up to a 77, and this isn't a realistic rebuild, so we don't really need him at tight end, I guess. He won't get any playing time at either position, but, well, no, he might get a little bit of playing time. I guess we'll see. He is way too thin to play tight end at 6'8", 229. He should at least be, like, 250 at 6'8", but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> And then Sherard Goodrich is only a 71. I'm a little disappointed by that. I thought he would be like a 70. Well, I don't know what I expected, honestly. Are you better at like, no, not at defensive tackle. Outside linebacker, he stays the same. That makes sense because his strength isn't very good. I don't know. We'll leave him at defensive end. Jamie Adkins kind of sucks. I mean, he has 99 speed, but that's the only good thing about him. Marquise Judge had a dev trait, so that's cool. And then the rest of these picks I didn't make, so I don't know what they are. But let's get into year three and we will see what our overall is now. Now, hopefully better. Damn it, I forgot to check who the best players in the class were. Whatever, that's fine. But here's a look at the team heading into year three. Our defense is getting better. Not an 80 yet. I mean, again, I just, we haven't really added many free agents. We haven't really been able to. But now our defense is like all dev traits, so it should be able to develop a little bit. We'll see. Ooh, Chris Bost is almost up to an 80. He's really becoming pretty good. Yeah, that sentence made sense. I mean, the offense is still an amazing overall. It's amazing on paper. It's 93 so it should do well it won't but it should and yeah the defense is getting there so again let's get to the midseason point and we will see how we do oh and i almost forgot uh i guess it's a little late now in the video but i'll still ask it question of the day here's one that i don't think i've asked before surprisingly i always try to keep these you know nfl or at least football related but who is your favorite nfl player not on your favorite team mine would have to be the greatest football player to ever live garden or Minshew. I mean, I don't know if that counts because I'm a Washington State fan. No, well, I guess it does because he's not like on my favorite NFL team. So yeah, I guess that counts. But yeah, Gardner Minshew is my GOAT. The greatest football player. Honestly, the greatest person to ever live, if you ask me. That's a that's a peak human right there. It can't get any better than that. But let me know your favorite NFL player down in the comments. Not on your favorite team. I would ask that, but I feel like that would be a little too basic. I mean, I guess I could sometime. I've probably asked it before. I have a terrible memory. Uh, okay. I've seen a lot of uh, hype for the new NCAA game that's going to be coming out this summer. And do we really trust this company to not entirely butcher that game? <laughs> I wouldn't say EA has a great track record, especially with sports games. Uh, yeah, we're 0-6 here with an 86 overall team. <laughs> great. Let's see what's going wrong. Let's see who we're probably trading. Joel Batonio is not doing great. Is it just the defense? I mean, it looked like our offense was struggling too. We have nine total sacks on the season. That's great. And three picks. I mean, this doesn't look good, but this doesn't look like an 0-6 team. <laughs> okay, we have the 10th scoring offense and the 31st scoring defense, but we have the 22nd ranked offense in terms of yards, I guess, and the 8th ranked defense in terms of yards. I don't understand. Well, we have some re-signings to worry about. Anthony Richardson, he isn't very expensive. We'll go six years, 148 mil, and ooh, just kidding. We don't have the money. <laughs> Okay, well, we can free up some money at the end of the year. That's fine. We'll probably trade someone away. Joel batonio has been kind of ass, so we might do that. We'll see. But let's just get to the end of the season, and we'll see how we finish. I love this game. I mean, we have one of the best rosters in the league. We're not the best, like the Falcons have an 87. Same with the Dolphins. And the Cardinals are tied with us at an 86. But we're an 86 overall. We're, like, the fourth best roster in the league. And we finish 6-11. and 11. Honestly, our defense isn't even even that bad 
that on paper anymore. I mean, it's not good, but it's almost an 80. I mean, let's see. The Cowboys are always way too good in this game. Let's try their defense. Some people told me their defense is pretty good. If I can find it, there. So we'll see how that does next year, but let's check out our season stats. Anthony Richardson, still a lot of interceptions, but he's been pretty good. Almost 3,800 yards, 29 touchdowns, 15 picks. I mean, he's been good, but the picks. I feel like that's really hurting us. Nice completion percentage. I mean, he has like 50 interceptions over the last three years. Or what, like 48? That's not great. But Christian McCaffrey, 1,300 yards, 4.6 per carry, 15 touchdowns. Amon Ross St. Brown, 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns. The blocking ended up being pretty good. And then Dorian Williams led the team with 141 tackles. Tackles for loss, we had 14 for Coleman and Abdullah, and one or 13 for Minor. And sacks, we actually had seven for Jeremy Coleman. He was pretty good. He only has star dev, but hopefully that'll be superstar by the end of this year. We'll see. Four for Abdullah, and then that's pretty much it. And interceptions, three for Johnson, two for Bost and Brown and Woodley, and then one for Mapu, Jones, and Sewell. Or did Sewell even have one? I don't know. But MVP goes to Lamar Jackson on the Saints. Offensive player of the year goes to AJ Brown. McCaffrey at number two. That sucks. St. Brown at number nine. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Dan Dre for the J uh, Jaguars. I almost said Jangles. I always make this excuse, but I woke up like 40 minutes ago. <laughs> Jeremiah Davis at number 10. I definitely remember who that is. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Clay Stewart for the Raiders. We get cucked. Big shocker. Jeremy Coleman at number two. <sighs> feels like being a Seahawks fan, man. That's, I, I've said this before. I feel like that's why I have such a distaste for this game is because with awards, we get cucked here. The Seahawks get cucked in real life for awards. The Seahawks have just been okay in real life when they should be better every year. And that's kind of how it is in this game. <laughs> or sometimes we're bad in this game and we should actually be one of the best teams in the league. You hate to see it. But hopefully with the new defensive playbook, hopefully with some better players now, hopefully we can start to do a little better. We haven't had a winning record, <laughs> and we have the tied for third best roster in the league. It would be the best roster if we actually, you know, performed as well as we should and developed because of that. But the Chargers are just kind of creating a dynasty here slowly. They they beat the Cardinals, which are two usual teams in real life for the Super Bowl, definitely. The Chargers win 33-20. to 20. Interesting. Dorian Williams gets an upgrade, and he is up to X-Factor. I see the little symbol up there, just because he had a ton of tackles was he the NFL tackle leader or something? Yeah. All right. Cool, I guess. But let's see. Did we hit any other dev ups? I don't feel like we, like we would, but we actually do get one for TJ Hawkinson. Was he like super good? Not really. I'm kind of surprised he got that. Maybe like catches because <laughs> his yards weren't super great. He didn't have too many touchdowns. That's interesting. Okay. We don't get a dev trait for Coleman, but we do get one for Chris Bost, which we're creating a pretty good linebacker core here. I mean, <laughs> none of them are a great over overall, but great dev traits. I guess what's the point of a good dev trait if you're not really developing that quickly, but I guess at least we have them. I really wish Coleman got superstar though. He maybe deserved it. I don't know, but we have some interesting decisions to make this off season. The most important one being with the quarterback position. We actually have a little bit of money now and yeah, Anthony, see Anthony Richardson is cheap for a, a good quarterback, but I just don't love the interceptions, man. <laughs> Let's see. He's the number 23 ranked QB in the league in terms of overall, but overall doesn't matter anyways. I don't know why I'm checking that. The only things that matter are traits and playbooks, and those aren't even consistent, so I don't know. But let's see. I'll restructure some deals, and we will see if we can work up a decent amount of money. Okay, well, I was able to free up 30 mil from just restructuring. We'll re-sign TJ Hawkinson. We'll start with him. I don't even think he's gonna re-sign, but we'll go six years, 111 mil. Okay, he does take that. I just meant I didn't think he would take player-friendly. We would have to do very player-friendly. Maybe he would have. I don't know. Dorian Williams Williams, five years, 51 mil, and he takes it. I'm surprised he wants to rejoin the team. I'm surprised any of these players want to rejoin with how we've been underperforming. And then everyone else is just a backup. And then we could re-sign Anthony Richardson in free agency if there isn't anyone better. We also could go with a rookie QB, which is what I'm kind of thinking of. A lot of the time, rookie QBs don't do very well in year one, though. I don't know. They sometimes do. But let's see who's available in free agency. Nobody. Uh, <laughs> there's George Karloftis, who had two sacks this last
last year in close to full-time st starting snaps. So that's that's great. That's realistic. Love that for an 83 overall player. Okay, well, Anthony Richardson is the highest overall QB available, so I don't think we're going to be getting him back. So I think we will be drafting a QB. We'll bring Desmond Ritter back. He's really good in this game a lot of the time. I guess worst case scenario, we could start him, which doesn't look good on paper. But again, he's way too good in this game. Was like the worst starting quarterback last year in real life, but that's not the case in Madden. Ooh, Justin Archer, 23 years old with star dev. You know what? Let's bring him in too. Why not? I don't know what else we're going to do with this money. Let's just <laughs> let's sign a ton of young star dev players. There's no point in this. I don't know why I'm doing this. We just don't really have anything else to spend the money on. This this might be the worst free agent class I've ever seen, though. Like, there, there aren't even, like, 85 overall plus kickers. The only player higher than an 83 is Tony Pollard, and he's terrible in this game. <laughs> he's so bad. We could go Matt Milano. Here, I'll get one player, if we even can. He might have good offers already. God, all right, maybe not. <laughs> we'll just give him a massive contract, just because, again, why not? Probably won't even take that. We'll see. But we're going to try to sign all these players. It's mostly just... Oh, we can't sign him. It's mostly just these younger star dev players. I don't know why I'm doing this. I love how I complain so much about this game and I still make, you know, a video on it like almost every day. I just like football, all right? I'm surprised I don't get those comments. I always expect them. Like, oh, if you complain so much about the game, why do you play it? Well, first of all, I've already made a, a channel about it. And second of all, I just like football. And this is the only game. I wish there was a different game. God, Chuck Lawrence looks like he he's wearing number 69 too. He has the name and face of someone that would listen to like Tom McDonald or something. <laughs> he probably fucks with that new Ben Shapiro song. That's a lifted F-250 face if I've ever seen one. God damn. But I'm ready to be disappointed. I'm ready for pain. I don't think we'll get Leonard Williams. Let's see. Is he the only player that signed? No, I think we might have got one other. We get Desmond Ritter. Cool. Someone that probably won't even start. We don't get Leonard Williams even though we overpaid him like crazy. He goes to the Chargers like they needed more help here, which that's a crazy thing to say, but they are dominant here. Anthony Richardson goes to the Texans. Is there a different D lineman I could get? <laughs> Not really. Both Blake Cashman and Matt Milano signed. I'm suffering. Do these players want to sign? Some of them do. We get the, the okay receiver. This is torture. <laughs> Remind me to never do this again. <laughs> All right, well, I guess the positive of being terrible is a good pick. We pick at number six. There were some good-looking QBs. Well, there's one good-looking QB and then one pretty good-looking QB. I want Spencer Starr, but I don't think we can get him. <laughs> Maybe we can trade up. We just don't really have the value to trade up. That's the thing. You know what? If he lasts to, like, four, I might trade up. Okay, the, the Browns go with a tackle. The Giants go with the defensive end. Hmm. I mean, this this isn't a realistic rebuild, so do you want, like, our first round pick and Joe Tipman and, like, a second next year? Let's go. And let's go with Spencer Starr. Something interesting is he has elite throw power, but he's not even listed as a strong arm QB. He's listed as an improviser. He's not, like, that fast, though. I mean, he has pretty good speed. That's, like, good speed for a QB. So we'll see what his ratings are. He's an interesting player. He has hidden dev, 96 throw power, 80 speed, 87 excel, 89 change direction. He's pretty damn athletic, despite not being the fastest in the world. He looks... God, I hate that face. Like, why make one of the rookies look 40? Like, that face genuinely... That guy looks 40, but he's 21. I, I don't understand. But we get our QB of the future, hopefully. Well, I guess maybe this one year, because this is probably the last year of the rebuild. We'll try to make it count, though. I do still want a safety. I was gonna focus scout safeties, and then I was like, oh yeah, we need a quarterback. We probably need a quarterback. I mean, it was, safety was my focus position but I just don't have these guys fully scouted. This guy looks this terrible and is a first to second round talent. I mean, he doesn't look terrible, but he is D play rack man and block shedding, and he isn't that fast at all. Shepard looks pretty good. Donnell looks pretty good. Shepard looks better, though. All right, we might go Tyrone Shepard here. I was hoping there would be better safeties. None of the safeties in this class looked that good. There was one first round guy, but he's gone. All right, let's go with Tyrone Shepard. Normal dev, unsurprisingly. We'll see what his overall is. He probably won't even get any playing time. 
honestly. But I focus scouted safety, so I felt obligated to take a safety. And let's see, is there anything else we need? Maybe, I mean, another pass rusher, but none of the pass rushers are good. If it was the first round, sure, but we needed a QB. This guy looks all right. Najee Means, what was his combine? Eh, not great. Yeah. Dylan Dodson looks good. Do we really need another defensive tackle, though? We kind of have a lot. I mean, we could use, like, a really good defensive tackle, but I don't know if we need more young ones and developmental ones. But honestly, I don't really see anyone else worth taking. This linebacker looks good. We definitely don't need more linebackers though, but he does look really good. Are we gonna go with another linebacker? <laughs> this guy looks, uh, okay. I've also taken guys that look like this guy, and they've been a 62 overall, so, eh. Oh, there are a lot of good cover middle linebackers. This looks like a strong linebacker class. Yay, just what I wanted. Jesse Ortega. That's kind of a rare face. I never really see that face. Good ratings, elite speed, skip the combine. Leo Curry, also elite speed and elite agility. Ortega has better ratings, though. Roderick Stovall, also also elite speed. He is really fast, and he's only the second fastest. Hold on. What is this middle linebacker class? <laughs> Who's faster? Is there just not someone that's faster? Yeah, that's about right. Unless it was one of these top guys? No? Thanks, EA. That's cool. I kind of like Jesse Ortega. I think we'll go with him. Let's take him. Hidden Dev, 93 speed. That might be the fastest linebacker I've ever drafted. That's insane speed. How are you feeling about playing safety? What's his build? 6'2", 238? Slim down about 50? 15 pounds. We might have ourselves a pretty good safety here. We'll see. The defensive end I wanted is gone, but that's that's fine. I don't really care. He would have been a pretty good overall, I think, but it, he wouldn't have played. So let's get to the end of the draft. I might make one or two more picks. I don't think we got any great overall players. The linebacker might be pretty good. The quarterback we know is a good overall, but I'm not sure about the safety. He'll, he's probably only like a 74 or something. We'll just see. Ooh, okay. This was actually ignoring this pick right here. This was a pretty good draft. So Spencer Starr is an 81. That's even better than I expected. I don't know why I expected him to be lower. I mean, these are strong draft classes and he was a top five player. Where does he rank though? He's the second best player in the class. We'll take that. I wish we could get Gerald Williams. That guy looks insane. I guess, well, he is an 80 overall speed rusher, so I guess he would kind of fit. I was going to say he isn't a scheme fit, but he's close enough. Yeah, this was the safety I was wanting, but he went way sooner than we could have taken him, so that's fine. Who cares? Why did I go? Why do I keep thinking? And we're the Browns. But yeah, Tyrone Shepard is not good. He's only a 73. Those tacklings really bad and his pursuit isn't great. That's tough. Jesse Ortega though is a 76. Again, 93 speed, 89 excel, 82 awareness as a rookie. That's insane. All right, what? Let's see what he would be at safety. My guess is a 78? 79. Okay, so he's gonna be a safety for us. We'll slim him down to like 219. Sure, still be a thick safety, but not, not 230. And we'll keep him the same overall, but we'll give him a little more speed and less strength. There we go. Cool. He's actually really not that good of a cover player <laughs> at all. Only 69 zone. Nice, but 65 man, that's neither of those are great. And we also ended up picking Roderick Stovall. <laughs> what would he be at safety? He'll probably be like a 74. I don't think I'm actually going to move him to safety, but 73. And then my last pick was Caleb Winslow. The CPU, or he has star dev, or well, it's probably star dev, but he has hidden dev by by the way, but the CPU picked Brayton Bush, which always look for, you know, blocking tight ends in the seventh round, or at least very late in the draft, as long as they actually have like A blocking. Usually look for the ones that have A blocking, elite strength, and A awareness. Those are usually the ones that are good. They have to usually check all three boxes. I've also seen ones that don't and only have like B for one of those and are still good, but usually the best ones will have A, like run block and pass block, A awareness and elite strength. He also has pretty good speed. 80 speed. Normally, they're really slow. I mean, 80 speed isn't amazing, but for a blocking tight end, that's pretty good. But anyways, let's get into the final year of this rebuild, and we will see how the team's looking. But here's a look at the team heading into the year. That's not normally what I say. Well, kind of. It's a very, very good team. I mean, 92 overall offense, 79 defense. I thought our offense and defense would even out a little more. I didn't think our offense would get worse, which it definitely didn't, but I thought our defense would be better by the end of this. We just literally weren't even able to sign a single free agent other than Antonio Johnson. And I guess the safeties, but like only one of them is still starting. This has pretty much just been a, a draft and develop defense, but I mean, it isn't, it isn't that bad. I've seen worse. I'm sure teams currently have worse defenses than us and they'll probably do better. You know what? To be petty, again, I'm going to ask the question.
question, where does an 86 overall team rank in the league? The Saints also have an 86. The 49ers have a 79 overall offense, and they're gonna get three more wins than us. Tragic. Uh, the Falcons are also an 86. Are we tied for the best team in the league now? The Chiefs are also an 86. Same with the, there are a lot of 86 teams. No 87s though. We are tied for the best roster in the league. I think we do have the worst defense, but we also have the best offense. But let's get to the end of your number four, and hopefully we can finish this rebuild out strong. We will see. Oh, okay. Well, here we are at the end of year number four. And if you've seen one of these videos before, y'all know why we're here. Thankfully, <laughs> it finally happened. But if you haven't already, be sure to leave a like on the video. Again, 3,000 likes? Is that what I said? 3,000 likes for a, a another one of these. If y'all enjoy it, I'd very much appreciate it. It helps push these to more people, helps the channel. And be sure to subscribe for more. Trying to hit 50k by the end of the month. We are very close. And if you know anyone that, you know, might enjoy Madden Rebuilds and my uh, senseless complaining about this game, be sure to share the channel with them. <laughs> I would appreciate it. Ooh, Bush also might have a good dev trait. That's interesting. But of course, let me know what type of rebuild or fantasy draft rebuild I should do. Because I get most ideas from the comments. Y'all have some good ideas most of the time. I've been harassed about a million times to do a white players only rebuild. I don't know if I'm going to be doing that. Oh my god. But yeah, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. But before I reveal how we did in year number four, look at these dev traits. Okay, Spencer Star has X Factor. Did that say he's up to... Oh no, it said 96. I thought I said 99 throw power. I don't know why I saw that. But he has X Factor. He also has Freight Train. Why? <laughs> Give me... I don't even know what good traits are, honestly. Bazooka? Sure. I think that one was good at one point. I don't know if that's still good. So that's cool. What does Bush have? He's gone up two overall as a backup? He has Superstar. Okay. Ortega has X Factor. I really didn't expect that one. The quarterback mostly makes sense. I did not expect Ortega to have X Factor. That's insane. Already up to an 84 overall as a what? Third round linebacker? Was he third? Yeah, third round. Winslow has Superstar. Already up to 86 man coverage, 94 jumping. And I think we only hit one star. I would guess Stovall only has star because he's played a decent amount of snaps and has only gone up to overall. Yeah, only star. But I mean, out of what, six picks that I made or five, we hit two X factors and two superstars. That's insane. Oh, and also we finally made the playoffs. Barely, but we made them. And let's check out our season stats. This should be interesting. So here's what I did, which was maybe a mistake. I didn't think it would be a mistake. Did I do it right? I don't know. I, I switched our offensive playbook again and our offense wasn't very good. This year, our defense actually carried, although did it? We, for yards and scoring, our defense was good, but for everything else, it wasn't. I don't know. Oh no, I didn't change our offensive playbook. I forgot. Should I? I mean, we're not a very good West Coast power run at all. I was gonna switch it. <laughs> I'm just messing with the playbooks too much, but we'll switch to Kansas City. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. That's what I meant to do. I just forgot to, but Spencer Starr is a rookie, 3,500 yards, 24 touchdowns, nine picks. He was pretty good. That's a really good rookie season. Christian McCaffrey, 1,300 yards, 4.3 per carry, which isn't like phenomenal, but it's good. The yards are really good. 14 touchdowns. Amon Ross St. Brown, 1,200 yards and 15 touchdowns. Really not much outside of him though. The blocking was very good. Dorian Williams led the team with 108 tackles. I tried to get bossed the most tackles on the team. I put him as the number one sub linebacker, but it didn't really make a difference. I keep clicking A. Tackles for loss, we had 21 for Donald Miner, 20 for Coleman, 16 for Abdullah, and 14 for Reynolds, and then sacks. Nine and a half from Jeremy Coleman. He was very good. Eight from Yazir Abdullah. He's finally doing well. I don't know why I've struggled with his name so much throughout the rebuild. It just trips me up. I feel like I try to say it too quick. Yazir Abdullah. He's been absolutely terrible. I mean, he's had good tackles for loss. The sacks. But this year, he was finally really good. Really not much at all outside of those two. And interceptions, three for Woodley, but that's about it. We had one for Williams, Boss, Johnson, and Jones. Three out of four, very generic names. MVP goes to Josh Allen on the Eagles, though. Have we seen a Patrick Mahomes MVP? I guess we did year one, but no Bengals up there in the top 10. Offensive player of the year goes to Puka Nakua on the Colts. St. Brown at number seven. Defensive player of the year goes to Aaron Donald, also on the Colts. That, that bodes well for our upcoming game. Jeremy Coleman at number six. Offensive rookie of the year goes to Spencer Starr. Not a big surprise 
guys there. And defensive rookie of the year goes to Isaiah Ford for the Chargers. No Bengals. What did uh, our safety do? I can't remember his name. <laughs> Ortega. 74 tackles, 6 tackles for loss, 8 pass deflections. Yeah, not the best rookie year. I mean, it was fine. His overall is much better than he actually played. A big shocker, I know. I mean, stats aren't everything, but still. He should be a stats-heavy guy. He's not necessarily a great cover player, so he should have a lot more run defense stats. I don't know. But we have a first of many scenario for this game against the Colts. It's depressing that this is our first playoff game, and we're probably gonna lose it. <laughs> I'm so optimistic. I'm not a pessimist at all. Why does it look like the Bengals logos are crooked? Or like, straight on, on the right side? Like, it doesn't look like they're laid out right on the background. I've just, I, I just noticed that. Like, it looks like they're pointing straight at me. Like, they're perfectly straight to me. They're not perspectived right. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Like, on the right side of the wall. That's interesting. We'll go play it cool, though. I'm a yapaholic. I don't know what I'm talking about. Are we ready to lose here? I don't know if I'm mentally ready yet, but the Colts also have Dexter Lawrence. What is their D-line? <laughs> Did they just invest in defensive line and that's it? Yeah. I mean, they also got Puka Nakua. If Sam Howell at QB, I saw him up there for MVP. They just have the commander's QB room and they have Antonio Gibson. This is just the commander's offense. Well, not really. A little bit though. This is a weird team. I would never think to build a team like this. I mean, that isn't a bad strategy, but the offense is definitely suffering, especially the O-line. It's a bold strategy to <laughs> build the commander's remarkably great backfield and I guess the Raiders' remarkably great offensive line. I mean, they have some decent players, but this is gonna be a catastrophic loss. So let's simulate this game. I'm ready. Put me out of my misery. Of course, we just have to keep hanging on. This is the first time I've been disappointed about winning a playoff game. Get me out of here. I <laughs> I'm sick of this game. We have an upgrade for Marquise Judge. Who is Marquise Judge? He has star dev. Oh yeah, I remember him now. Never mind. Not exactly a scheme fit, but well, we got him plus three man there. Still only 65 man coverage. I'm really surprised Sherard Goodrich only had star dev. And the receiver that we took that year, uh, BJ Frazier. I thought at least one, but maybe both of them would have superstar at least because they're such weird players, but neither of them did. So that's tough. But we have a recap for the first of many. Give us those sweet, juicy staff points, please and thank you. And okay, if we're gonna lose a playoff game, this is fine. The Dolphins Dolphins are the same overall as us. They're an 87 across the board. It looks like they have Jesse Bates. Who's their QB? <laughs> Dak Prescott. Okay. Oh yeah, they had Chris Godwin. They have Rashawn Slater. They went a little more offense heavy and secondary. This is a really young team for the most part, other than their top three. This would probably be the best roster in the league in a couple years, but I guess we'll never find out because this is probably the final year or final game. Oh my God. <laughs> so glad we had a 93 overall offense to put up seven points or a 93. What did I say? I don't know. I'm I love this game, but we built a ridiculously good team I well, I would say it doesn't even look like we did a challenge I more so mean our team overall than uh, our splits with offensive and defensive overall I just mean we have a good overall team and even our defense on paper isn't even that bad Of course, you know our 80 our 81 overall defense throughout the rebuild performed better than our offense Especially this year, but I mean what what can you really expect? Am I just bad at rebuilds? I mean no objective Effectively, the teams that I build on paper are good. Literally, like, the best in the league, even when we do stupid shit like this. I don't know. <laughs> it was fun to build this team. It's a crazy-looking team. I guess that's what I can say about it. But yeah, that's gonna be the end of this rebuild. I hope y'all enjoyed. Maybe the defensive fantasy draft would be more successful than this because... No, our offense would do better in that one. I don't know. Did they did they fuck up the coding in this game? Did they accidentally like make it so the higher overall your team is, the worse it does? They might have. It wouldn't surprise me. I need a nap. <laughs> but thank you all so much for watching. And with that, I will see y'all again tomorrow, I think, for the next video. Subscribe for more and goodbye.